Touching base again with the Quincy Council on Aging Director Tom Clasby for a little update now that we're into the month of March. Tom, how are you? Doing all right. We're coming up on a year, though, Joe, aren't we, since uh, the shutdown? It's hard to believe. It has been a very long year. Yeah, it is hard yeah. to believe, uh, yeah. and I'm sure for you and your staff as well. Yeah, you know, I I never would have believed that it would be this long, and and it and, and it's strange that it's, you know, I I think it seems even longer than it is in some in some senses, just because it's been so difficult for people to you know to deal with. I think you're right. Yeah, what uh, what is the the latest and greatest at the, at the Kennedy Center these days? Well, currently, right now, we're in, you know, uh, it is tax season, and we, we do our taxes, and we're doing it just a handoff um, with them. Unfortunately, for people that are viewing this now, all the appointments are filled, but we do get cancellations, so they can call and get on a waiting list if they need them. Um, obviously, we can't um, have people come into the building, so they're driving through. We send them out a questionnaire ahead of time to fill that out, come in with their paperwork. The folks, the volunteers are tremendous, and uh, they'll, they'll meet them out by the front door, pick up the return, bring it into the building, they do it, and then they'll bring it back out to the person. So it's, 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 it's worked out pretty well uh, so far. And some people go and run another errand or something, and then they'll come back and and, and, you know, and do it, but some most people just just wait, and it doesn't take very long. It's a nice service, and um, is is That's, there any cost for that, Tom? It's free, you know something, Joe. And two, it's one of it's 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 one of our longest standing programs. I know you probably remember Molly Papel when I first came on board. Uh, she you know she ran it for many many years. For us, and um, did a great job. She just passed away, actually, a, a number of months back. But she was uh, a couple of years older than 100, I believe. Wow! I think, I think 102, possibly 103. Um, fantastic woman, and, and did such great work for so many years. But you know, when I look back at some of the programs, and you've been involved in, in, in covering a lot of them, uh, the Senior Olympics is a long-standing program. The tax program, the long-standing program, our Center for the Visually Impaired, again, another real, you know, far outdate the Kennedy Center in terms of Council on Aging programs. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, and the city itself has a, you know, a long history of, of uh, helping senior citizens. That's why so many of them live here, I think. I guess. <laughs> I wanted to take credit before when the New England centenarian study, as I've quoted many times on uh, QATV, they, they said Quincy had the largest concentration of centenarians in the Commonwealth. And I, I, I wanted to take credit for it, but they assured me that it wasn't any of my doing. So <laughs> I don't know. Um, how long is no, the, think, uh, the tax program going to be going on for, Tom? So they go just about up until April fifteenth. You okay. know, they'll 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 go up until a, a few days. I think it's two days before um, to finish up. But um, and I would I was hoping and in in if extension I was kind of hoping that they would extend it as they did last year, um, just because people are in similar situations. So if that were to happen, then we would extend. You know, would be able to take on uh, more appointments, but. As of as of now, as far as we know, that the deadline is the official deadline that it always has been. Okay, the dreaded yeah. deadline. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Who are your uh, Who are your volunteers? Who's Who's helping out? Well, we have a whole great. You know, it's it's a lot of times with our volunteers. Um, like, for instance, the Shine program, which is another volunteer program, it's not just a matter of coming down and uh, pitching in. I mean, they have to go through extensive training. So we have a number of folks that are here. They do great work, and they're, they, they go through a whole training process um, 
to, to make sure it's funny. Somebody asked me years ago, they were a little skeptical about it. And they said, well, how did, well, the IRS. So, <laughs> um, a, it's a program that's done in, in unity with AARP and, um, uh, the IRS. So they go through extensive training and then the shine volunteers too. Again, they go through a really extensive, uh, extensive training. So, so much that we do, even in the day-to-day -day operation of the place, when we're open, we depend heavily on volunteers. I'm really grateful for that. Yeah, that's a, that's a real commitment. It's not just, you know, come down for a couple of hours, uh, volunteer and go home. I mean, you need to, you need to really commit to it. No, absolutely. You know, and I, I, I remember Image Mazo from the Executive Office of Elder Affairs, when he would, we go through various trainings throughout, and he always used to say, remember, volu your volunteers are staff, you know, in a sense. And, and um, you know, they take, it, they take it very serious. I think they look upon themselves as, as, as staff, although they know that they're giving something back, you know. And we do very little. I think we give them, the tax people get a little free coffee, so <laughs> that's about all we can do for them. This uh the, with the with these times you know yeah but, um, yeah well i mean that to, to talk about being that's really self-motivated you know there's no uh, there's no there's no pay incentive that they're that they're working for it's it's because they want to do it right absolutely you know uh, you know besides that I, I i just i think you're aware that we're we're operating um you know our transportation is still in in full operation um, and, 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 the, and they are paid staff in the transportation, but you know, I've received, I, I, over the years I've received many, many notes, but I've received a, a couple of notes since this crisis, um, a few actually, and, and um, just, just highlighting the drivers and how wonderful they are and how accommodating the staff is, it makes me happy to you know to get when someone takes the time to write a note like that um it, it it really brings a smile on my face because it brings to mind that they are going above and beyond and they're going you know they they're putting themselves in in, in harm's way um so you know we're grateful for all the people out there that do so much in the supermarkets and everything else you know but i i i, I can forget that as we're operating you know that they're out there they're doing it and, and they're doing it with a smile and, and providing the kind of service that um that w that we would hope that they do yeah it's certainly uh definitely uh, worthwhile to point that out for sure they are a lifeline i'm sure for a lot of folks who otherwise would be um would be homebound yeah the other thing too is you know we we're hoping and we don't know and the, i know the president has has uh, expects that people will be vaccinated by, but did he say the end of May? Yeah. Um, you know, I, I don't know whether that'll be a reality and we'll see. Um, but, you know, we are looking <laughs> to a future date where, 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 where we can open and we certainly will reopen, um, you know, for people that may have some questions about that. We're going to make sure that we can do it, do it safely. Um, but, I, I think, you know, it's not unrealistic to say at least sometime, you know, in the summer we'll, we'll, we'll have our doors open and we'll probably have to work in a little bit of a limited capacity. We'll have to watch the numbers and, um, you know, there'll be some new protocols uh, in place. But um, my goal is to, I hate that the new normal, my goal is to get back to normal normal eventually. Um, so we'll, we'll start slow, but I, I, I think we can all see that there's a little bit of light at the end of the tunnel. I think you're right. Yeah. Uh, have you heard any, uh, stories from some of your members that have been vaccinated, uh, yet? Well, you know what? I, it's so funny when I, I, I said, when the vaccine comes out, the first people get it, they're going to, they're going to be knocking on the door and, um, <laughs> <laughs> and that did happen. <laughs> that did happen. You know, it's, I got my shot. I'm all set. You know, when are you going to open up? Well, we have to wait for <laughs> a few more, but you know, it's, it, it, and I know that the governor has come under some criticism and, and not, not, not that, um, things can always be done, um, better, but I think what people have seen is 
the application process was difficulty, difficult. The city put in an apparatus in place to kind of help people through that. And there were a lot of people that were frustrated. But, but what we've seen is that those, once they got to, uh, you know, man it, uh, it, moved, it moved along very quickly and was very efficient. So I think people are, are, are coming to a, a little better understanding that, you know, it is, it is happening. Um, and, um, you know, we'll, we'll get through it. No, I think you're right. And having Manit here in Quincy is just such a huge benefit. Um, it, it really is. And in talking with the folks at Manit, they uh, anticipate continuing to do their vaccination clinic. You know, they're they're not being hindered. Uh, their only their only hindrance is the amount of vaccine they can get is the supply, and that's the, that's the same issue with the state too. Right, right, right. right. You know, and you can only do what you can do. You, you know, but. right. Exactly. I, it's very funny because I think eventually, you know, it'll be a point where it'll, it'll be everywhere. You know, all the pharmacies will have it, you know, similar to the flu shift, there won't be any difficulty at all, but it's just getting to that point where, um, you know, it's frustrating for folks. I think you're right. Yeah. Is your transportation able to take folks to get their vaccines, Tom? Yeah, we have, because that would come under uh, medical. It, 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 it would be the, um, you know, the same protocol that we really would like to have a two-week notice, um, although we always encourage people to call because if we can take in a moment's notice, we will. Okay. Um, it's been a little bit of uh, difficult because the vehicles can only take uh, three people at a, at a, at a time. You yeah. know, we, we have to do the social distancing on the vehicles and they have to be sanitized in between the rides and stuff. So it's been a little bit difficult, but yeah, we are doing it. Good to know. Good to know. Um, obviously, you're not going to be able to have your annual um, St. Patrick's Day uh, party, I'm guessing. No. And, you know, last year, we actually did get that off. That was the last event um, that we were able to do before the shutdown. And I was, you know, as we were watching this thing a few months back, I was hoping that that would be the kickoff you know, events, but uh, obviously we're not going to be able to, uh, not going to be able to pull it off. So I don't know, maybe we'll have St. Patrick's Day in June. We'll, <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to see. Um, and do you know about Senior Olympics yet, or, or does that look unlikely? I don't, I don't know um, for sure. It's something, it's funny, I just was on a Zoom uh, on, on something else with Michelle Hanley, and we'll have to chat about it. I, 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 I can't imagine that would be able to, to put it together only because um, we're just not quite there yet. And that, that's kind of a killer because we're so close, you know, quite there just yet. Yeah. You think folks might do a kind of virtual senior Olympics like we've seen so many other things, you know, do it in, in their own backyard well, or something? Well, yeah, you know, maybe. And I think, you know, that, as you know, you've been terrific to us, and we really appreciate it. We've been able to do some of our programming, uh, yoga and exercise classes and stuff you have been showing it for us, and people have really enjoyed that. It's something, you know, and, and uh, to be able to see familiar face and go through it. And then we've been fortunate enough, and again, thanks to you guys, to pick up programs from other councils on aging and other towns and broadcast them on with you too. So. Um, at least that's a little something. I had somebody call me a number of uh, weeks back, and, and they were very concerned about their mother, who's up there. And and I mentioned, you know, those things, and they weren't aware of it. And it's it's really helped. It's, it's been it's been very good for her. So that's good. I'm glad to hear that. We're, we're happy yeah. to help for sure. But do you? Um, what do you foresee, kind of sticking around at the Kennedy Center post pandemic? After, after all this time, you know, what, what are some good things maybe that have been learned through it? Well, you know something, it's funny. I think some of the protocols that we had to put in place, like the, um, you know, the plexiglass shields and stuff like that, um, we, we always, from day one, um, and I, it's funny, I don't, I remember so clearly walking through the building and because the mayor was terrific, you know, he said, 
you're going to have the, the of course, at that time was the Miles Standard School. He had a significant money to put into it. And he said, you tell me what you need in there. So you go through it and more or less design it. And one of the things I did do is I had hand sanitizers in every room. Um, we've always had that. Uh, you know, but but even just for cold and flu season, I think, you know, with the, we'll, the, the, the shields we have, the plexiglass shields we have, um, we haven't really had to use them because the building hasn't been open to the public, but I can see using those certainly when we reopen, mm -hmm. but also, um, you know, say we get through this whole thing and back the vaccine rollout is fine. Um, I, I think during cold and flu season, we'll put those shields up again. Um, or we'll keep them up permanently. I don't, I don't know which, uh, but, but at least we'll, we'll have that option. Yeah, I'm not. I, I think you're right. I think we're going to see and that uh, I think, like, at grocery stores. Uh, are not going to go away. You know, things like that. Yeah, yeah. And you know, we've always put signs up um, during cold and flu season with reminders. But you know, we'll try to we'll try to do more of that. You know, uh, washing your hands, using the sanitizers, masks. You know, thing. Thing, things like that. Anything that will be helpful, um, we'll tr we'll try to stay on top of it and remind on a regular basis. Yeah. No, I've talked to folks who say, um, you know, they're always going to wear a mask now and during cold and flu season. We pretty much saw, you know, thankfully no flu um, in uh, this past season. And right. That might be part of it, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, you know, we, we There'll be little bumps in the road, but I, I'm, I'm so much looking forward to getting back to, you know, when we can be in full capacity. And, um, you know, I thank God that we've been able to be here and we have been doing things. Certainly, the, it's been very different without the seniors here. Um, you know, so it's... It, I'm, 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 I'm glad that we've been able to provide some services, but at the same time, we, we all really long for, uh, long for the day when we can have people back and just bring life back to the building. You know, it's, it's, it's still a little surreal <laughs> with just the staff in here and, uh, you know, it's going to be great to ha hear the music again and, you know, hear the exercise and see folks that we haven't seen them for so long. And a lot of them have been doing things on their, on their own, um, you know, and of course, yeah, as you know, we've been reaching out to people. We've been making phone calls. We've been doing cards. The Friends of the Kennedy Center have been doing things too. So we've been trying to stay in touch um, as best we can. But they have also been staying in touch with each other. They've been doing little conference calls and uh, wellness checks on their own, and then we'll hear about it. So that's, that's, that's good. Yeah, I, yeah, absolutely. You have to look for the good in, in anything, and I think there's, there has been a lot of it, you know, despite despite all the the bad negative stuff um, as well. And I'm sure there's been plenty of that, unfortunately. Yep, you know, we've lost we've lost a number of good friends, and uh, you know that that uh, that's never easy. Um, but we are looking forward to the days when we can we can go back and tell our COVID stories. Anything else we should let folks know about right now, Tom? No, I think, you know, just that we are here and we're ready to assist in any way we can. Don't hesitate to call. Um, you know, we're, we're, we're very often the conduit to other services. So um, just, you know, give us, give us a buzz. And if we can help you out, we're certainly there for you. What's the best uh, number to, to reach out at? So 617-376-1506 uh, uh, is probably the best number. To get, yeah. All right. Very good. Great to see you, Tom. Appreciate it. Always a pleasure, my friend. You take care. And I'm looking forward, Joe, when we can do this in studio. It'll be a while yet, but. <laughs> As am I. Uh, that'll be a great day for sure. And uh, and like you said, it will happen. So we'll, Absolutely, yeah. we'll hold out yeah. hope. Thanks again, Tom. Right. My best to everyone there. Thank you. Same to you.